Hey guys, welcome back to Starcon 2024. Upper left hand corner, we have Goosehead is starting as the Red Zerg, the man himself. Bottom right hand corner, we have Tenderization starting as the Pink Terran. I believe Tenderization, by the way, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I'm fairly certain that Tenderization is the guy. For, he, I know that he's getting a big, smart brain, big brain degree out there right this second, but I believe he also does a lot of this stuff for Artosis as far as setting up some AI, whatever not, uh, out there. He does a lot out in the community, is my understanding. This is going to be on Retro. Apologies for not having... This is a problem with having an overlay sometimes, is sometimes you forget to set the overlay properly. So the, the previous couple matches, I did not have the overlay set up correctly. But uh, yeah, Gooseheaded, I'm excited to see his games. Because, uh, he, first of all, if you know, uh, if you've played Counter-Strike, you should know where that, uh, I actually chatted with him a bit. Uh, I can tell he's my era of gaming because of some of the, the, the nods here and there. But I'm excited to see his play. I actually have not seen him. This is my first replay of doing anything with Gooseheaded. But I also want to give him a shout out because he made some incredible figurines. And just exudes passion for StarCraft in the community and kind of the excitement. Uh, and kind of the giddiness of a lot of it, which I really, really appreciate. So Overlord produced to start, Drone Cycle to follow up. Um, looks like no pool, so it's just gonna, I was thinking this is going to be over pool, but it looks like instead we are going to go ahead and see a uh, 11 or 12 hatch from Gooseheaded to start. It looks like it is in fact going to be 11 hatch at the natural expansion. In the meantime, we do have Depot and Barracks in the base for tenderization. Not going for a front door seal, so going for a bit of a, a safer interior build. Wanting to keep his, and let's see if he draws off a Marine to go ahead and seal his front door as well. So I need to scout up towards that right hand corner. So should come across, unless he goes top right, bottom left, which is a little bit less frequent. Should come across the drone scout and make his way top left. Goose headed, going to end up obviously with second scout as well because he's got that overlord going bottom right. Uh, what this does open up an opportunity for, unfortunately, tenderization didn't plop down Marines right at the, uh, he didn't plop this down as a forward barracks, but oftentimes what you can do with this is sometimes you can sneak tech a little bit easier. Um, you can do a couple other things in this late in time because that overlord at a position and not in a space where it can go and see whether that initial barracks is glowing or not. And that leaves a lot of space uh, to do some really fun and interesting clever cheese tactics, uh, potentially. Tenderization has two SCVs out in the field, so I'm wondering if this isn't Interesting that he sent the second SCV out there to scout. Maybe he just wants to make sure he got his eyes. In the meantime, looks like this is... Ooh, where do you have a... I think this might have been... Was that three hatch before gas? Should have paid a little bit more attention. But a we do have an in-base three hatchery already. A few Zerglings are in fact queued up. Yeah, this is a little bit later gas. I believe that was three hatchery before gas. So a lot of larvae to start. And let's see if that turns into a lot of marine uh, Zerglings to start. And... Tenderization dropping the command center at a very exposed natural expansion, even at cross spawn. This uh, is honestly a very, very exposed base and no bunker up yet either. So we'll see how Goose is able to micro against this. Was able to kill the SCV, which with these initial Zerglings, there's the murderer right there. Murder when you kill the SCV, I suppose. Bunker on the, on the way. The Zergling still could go for a run by into the main. We do have gas grabbed behind it. In a, but yeah, still sitting at one barracks right this second. An academy. So one barracks academy in the midst of this. Now this is looking a little bit more defensible all of a sudden. Although the Marines are not in the bunker. So Gooseheaded filing two Zerglings in to go ahead and check the situation out. Preemptively dropped a creep colony at the natural expansion. And I think that was wise, again, because of the lack of scouting information. This is actually where you also need those Zerglings to kind of get a good look at how many Marines are out on the front. But was able to get eyes in the command center. Unfortunately, not able to get eyes on tech otherwise. It looks like we do have an academy. This is kind of interesting. So we got we have Academy Stim, but no second barracks. And this bar this might just be some macro errors on tenderization's part, but missing some of the Marine production a little bit here in the midst. And uh, we'll see if Gooseheaded is able to... We'll see if Goose go that way if Goose is able to capitalize on it. Goose actually going Hydralisten in the midst of this. So we'll see if he goes for a three hatch lurker or if he goes for a three hatch Hydra bust. It is possible that'll be a little bit harder to execute, I think, at cross position. But still a very, very strong build overall. And right now, 
So the Academy up, but no Cossap station dropped either for tenderization to get eyes on this, and he hasn't scouted further as well. So he's just been pinned to the base, just now dropping that second barracks, is getting a medic out in the midst of this. So he's he's got uh about eight marines out there. Stimpak, in fact, finished now working on range, plus one weapons. Also building, but playing very, very defensively up to this stage. We do see Lurker Tech being upgraded, so it's going to be three hatch Lurker. We already have a drone in position at the 12 o'clock. I think Goose actually in a pretty strong position to go ahead and drop that, but potentially just wants to make sure he has some hold position Lurkers out in the field. I like this build on this map in particular because there's a lot of ramps to work with to make sure the, the Lurkers really, really play well. And it can be, especially for a large period of time, you can make sure that Lurkers hold ramps and front doors for extended periods of time. Second, third, and fourth barracks now online and operational. Compsat station dropped. Marines starting to flood out. The Zerglings moving a bit to the side. Some additional Zerglings flooding out as well. Lurker tech not quite finished. We have the Hydralisks moving their way out. And it looks like the Marine, so tenderization initially pushing out a little bit, but with the run by of Gooseheaded, with just a handful of the Zergling actually managed to get two kills in the midst of this. I'm wondering if this is the, er the same killer from earlier. Now getting wiped out, but that also buys time for these Hydralists now that the Lurker Tech is complete. It goes go ahead and morph out in the forward field. Unfortunately, with the timing of this, for Goose, he's not going to get a good hold position Lurker play. Uh, Comsat of the main saw the Hydralist then. And so he knows, okay, Lurker's potentially out in the field. Let me just go ahead and back up, wait for... Actually, never mind. We got five racks in the midst of this. So five racks. We're, encro we're, we're approaching seven minutes, which is usually you want to have your factory down somewhere close to here. 6.30, seven minute range is usually want to have it. And I'm going to see if tenderization drops that in the midst of this. And science vessel is even more important in this situation. Bunker drop. We also have that 12 o'clock hash refinishing. So right here, Tenderization was reading this as, this is a Lurker bust. But Gooseheaded, we know better, Gooseheaded has already got that 12 o'clock base up and running. And so he can actually just plop some whole position Lurkers out in the forward field and play uh, defensively this way. And I'm, I'll be curious if he actually has them uh, hold position queued or not, or if they're just going to be open fire Lurkers in a second. So hoping that Tender goes for that right-hand path we, do, we don't have any Lurkers here at the natural as of yet. A Compsat dropped, but Tenderization playing very tender-footed, pun intended. Plus one weapons is in fact complete at this stage. Factory about three-fourths complete. So it looks like it is constructed, but we already have that Tech the Hive. Aspire being added on as an after effect. No third gas up quite yet for Gooseheaded. Wants to make it even at this stage. Same deal as the Spire opener. You want to make sure you get that gas up and running ASAP to have that padding of gas to make sure you're getting plenty of units and getting that evolution chamber as well. Potentially you get plus one weapons uh, and also the, the adrenal speed and whatever not makes circlings all the more important. Tenderization, oh, so walking up, thinking about it briefly. I think this is hold position because I think they would be firing at this medic otherwise. But this could turn into a brilliant massacre, potentially. Oh, this could turn into a brilliant massacre. So some Zerglings waiting along the edges here. I'm waiting for this. I have my... My... I just really... I know this is bad to like root for this sort of thing. The mass death of Marines. But this could be a glorious hold position release on these units. In the meantime, Tender, about 20 supply up. And not a bad position, but that third gas is definitely in place. Spire, Hatchery, Defiler Mound. Being constructed... By Gooseheaded, he's in a, at a very healthy drone count as well in the space of this. Some more Zerglings making their way out on the field. No additional Lurkers, though. So it's just these four Lurkers along that right-hand side. And before the Adrenal upgrade and that Carapace are complete, Tenderization potentially can bully this round. So he's got a Siege Tank grouping up as well along that edge. So potentially going to move out with that. Science Facility a little bit delayed. And then second Starport dropping, actually. So a few missed optimizations in Tender, which at, uh, would be expected uh, here. It looks like a bit of a supply back for both players as well. 30 supply lead, anybody's game, and a bunch of Scourge starting to field. Some Hydralisks fielding, and I think we'll see if this turns into uh, Hydra Plague as well. Tender just stacking the Marines outside his natural expansion. Come on. 
This is this has really been a tease this entire time. Tenderization just keeps moving the units. A little bit here, a little bit there. Near these four lurkers. The lurkers have just been sitting. They've been patient. They've been pa We've been patient. The lurkers have been patient. Waiting for that. But in the meantime, uh, tenderization. Missing an opportunity to kind of get out in the field and maybe get some map control. We're going to wait on the science vessel to do so. Consume is about fin So Radiate's going to finish here, but... Consume's not that far off. Plus one weapons and adrenal upgrade are already there as well. And plus one carapace is going to be finished in not too long, which is going to make these Zerglings all the stronger against these Marines. And that plus the adrenal upgrade, uh, very, very good. And now, unfortunately, oh man, all of that waiting and potentially, okay, yeah, the, the Lurkers spotted. So now, being unleashed, able to damage that siege tank highly. Goose going to wander in at this stage. Ooh, getting a lot of damage done, though. The Zerglings getting completely annihilated. And the Lurkers cleared as well. Still a decent supply lead. The Scourge a bit late on the scene. Another base getting grabbed from Goose. This time at the upper right-hand corner natural. And Tender needs to get a move on to stop the gas. We do have Plague upgrading. So Goose headed wanting to turn this into Lurker Defiler Plague. He's got some Defilers out in mid-map. Now we're going to see... Uh, his unit control. Unfortunately, the Defilers spread away from the Lurkers, and Lurkers taking a lot of open fire here. Just now burrowing. Are they going to be able to get the... Okay, just getting the swarm in the nick of time, and Plague's going to finish... If he can get the Defilers underneath, Plague's going to finish in not too long. Lost a Lurker in No Man's Land in between. Slowly, and these Science Vessels, nice opportunity, jumping on top of the Science Vessels. That's a really great exchange. Taking out the initial science vessels just for the units that are kind of smattered out there. And tenderization, in the meantime, kind of delayed. This is where Terra needs to be shutting down Zerg gas. And instead, Gooseheaded getting out on the map with a lot of these units. So in a pretty good situation. Still might have some opportunity here to wander some Zerglings in and across to capitalize on the swarm that's there. War Defiler is making their way mid-map. Bottom that that uh, upper right nan the uh, upper right natural expansion has been grabbed. No gas there as of yet. Waiting for Gooser's response. A little bit of an odd uh, swarm placement right there along the lines, but able to get the Defiler in position where he can drop a follow-up plague on a lot of these Marines, which is going to make them sneeze kills. And right now, yeah, he can just go Zergling Defiler with that Carapace and continue playing from here pretty well. The Defilers have been pretty high value, so lost a handful of them, but is still in a really, really, uh, really good situation. He's got three gas capped. He's got a fourth gas on the wing. And Tenderization has been holding mid-map, and he has not yet grabbed the 6 o'clock. And Supply Counts uh, and Goose is out on the map. He's continuing the upgrades pretty well. And Tenderization hasn't been able to shut down the gas or really threaten things, and the Science Fizzle Count's been pretty low. There's still the Siege Tanks out in the field. Ooh, Lurker's not in position on the ramp, unfortunately. So missed opportunity. Burrowing just now. Zergling's going to move up to support and defend. There is a Defiler here to also provide some support. A Nidus Canal trying to get built. Not sure if this Nidus is actually necessary at this close position. But also gas can grab him. I think that Nidus was a little bit more necessary for that bottom right hand corner. With this reinforcement lane, it's uh, pretty slight. Drone going to lose his life to try to keep this 12 o'clock location up and alive. Tender now threatening here. Sport Colony trying to shove things back. And Tender just donating some units across that high ground. He still hasn't spotted that base to the right here. We do have the Nidus Canal finishing right here. And Goose ending around with some Zerglings looking to, to swarm and engage. Another reinforcement point. Also expanding to the 9 o'clock location. So doing a good job keeping the Science Hustle count low. Delaying tenderization. Moving up to, to Saturate right here. Delaying tenderization. Staying out on the map is going to be able to cut off the reinforcements here. Some Defilers making their way in just as tenderization is trying to make his way out to the 12 o'clock. A building loss, but nice move in. More important to keep that gas up and running, and that everything getting wiped out here on tenderization side. So we got three science vessels up in there. We do have some fire bats providing support. Goose actually could go up to Ultralisk at this stage. He's got enough gas to do so. And supply counts looking dangerously close. Still some a few medic marines and fire bats going to peel out. By the way, plus two carapace finished on those Zerglings. To help and then pretty well upgraded versus the plus two weapons otherwise. Nine o'clock base up and running for Goose. Goose looking good. And never mind, he did get an Ultralisk Cavern up. He even got the upgrade. I missed it. So he's got the big heavy Ultra units as well. That natural upper right. The Nidus got 
taken out. I wonder, was that a cancellation? Was that a was the nidus from here? The night I guess I misread that. It was the nidus from the twelve to the bottom right, rather than from the main. Firebat stemming in, trying to deal with the creep colonies to the right. Tenderization, however, not adjusting to engage bottom right. Firebats don't do the best damage to buildings, so it's going to be a while. But tenderization able to get into the twelve o'clock and starting to work on the hatchery lines. The zerglings and ultras swarming in from the rear, though. Let's see, is he going to be able to target fire down either of these hatcheries? So starting to work on that right-hand hatchery. Ultralisks and Zerglings swarm this science, nice play. Science Vessel coming in as well, clearing that out. More units were thinking about making their way top right, but now Tenderization realizing that Goose is for gas. He's got Ultralisks. He's highly upgraded. Tenderization didn't have an additional base. Great play from Goose right here in game one. Winning this. Very convincing win. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.